Hey there, physics friends. It's good to see you again. We are transitioning from linear to angular momentum. And as we will see, we will need to refresh our memories a little bit about the vector cross product. Why is that? Well, the angular momentum of a particle is defined in terms of a cross product. So if we let the vector L be the angular momentum, then the angular momentum is defined as the position vector crossed into the linear momentum of the particle. So for example, if I have a particle right here moving with a momentum P like that at a position vector R like this, then that particle could carry an angular momentum given by, well, as I already said, r cross p. So if we're going to really understand and work with angular momentum, we better understand the cross product. So in this video, primarily, we're just going to look at the mathematics of the cross product. We're going to talk about its magnitude, its direction, and how you calculate um, the cross product using components. So let's get started. All right, so like I said, we're going to be talking about the vector cross product. Sometimes this is also called the vector product, um, and that's in contrast or versus the scalar or the dot product. Okay. So if we have um, two vectors, A and B, we can compute a third vector by taking the cross product of A and B. So in particular, the input to the cross product is two vectors, and the output is also a vector. So that's sometimes why it's called the vector product, because you end up with a vector. OK. Um, a cross B is a vector, therefore it has a magnitude and it also has a direction. So we'll talk about how you find the magnitude and how you find the direction. Okay. Let's start first with the magnitude. Let's draw out our two vectors. We have, say, the vector a, and we have the vector b, and though they define a plane, which right now we're going to take to be the plane of our screen. The magnitude of the vector product a cross b is given by mag a mag b times the sine of the angle in between them. Okay, so here this theta is the angle in between those two vectors. And it's the angle in between A and B when they're drawn tail to tail. Okay. So what we can see is that we maximize this right-hand side when the angle is 90 degrees. So it's kind of like the opposite of the dot product. The dot product was 0 when the vectors are perpendicular. But here, the, um, the cross product has a maximum magnitude when the vectors are perpendicular. In particular, you can show that these vectors define a parallelogram. So we can draw that out. And what we can see is that mag a mag b times the sine of theta um, gives us the area of that parallelogram. So how do we see that mag a mag b sine theta is the area of this parallelogram? Well, we can see the area of the parallelogram is twice this blue shaded triangular area, one triangle here, one triangle here. And the area um, of this blue triangle is 1 half base times height, where the base is mag a and the height is b sine theta. So twice of 1 half mag a mag b sine theta gives me mag a mag b sine theta, and that is equal to the magnitude of a cross b. Okay. So when we think about the cross product, we can kind of think about the area 
enclosed between the two vectors. And if you shrink that area, you shrink the cross product. And how are you going to maximize the area? Well, you set theta to 90 degrees, and then you get the area of a rectangle. Okay, so just to be really explicit about this, let's consider the following cases. In this case, we have mag A, mag B, times the sine of 90 degrees, which is just equal to mag A, mag B, which is equal to the area of this rectangle, which is a special case of a parallelogram. In another case, let's consider when A and B are parallel or anti-parallel. So case two would be theta equals zero or 180 degrees. So A is parallel to B or A is anti-parallel to B. Okay, in that case, we have A, we have B, and the area of that parallelogram, or maybe we have A going to the right and B going to the left. In any case, the area defined by that parallelogram um, is zero. In either of these cases, mag A, mag B, sine theta is zero because <clears throat> sine of zero degrees is zero and so is the sine of 180. Okay. Well, what that means is, you know, if two vectors are that are parallel to each other have a zero cross product, we can immediately see that any vector crossed into itself must be zero because that vector is always going to be parallel to itself. Oops, not parallel to B, but rather parallel to itself. Okay. So any vector crossed into itself will give you zero unlike the dot product, in which case any vector dotted into itself gives you the square of the magnitude of that vector. So let's now talk about the direction of the cross product. For the direction of the cross product, we're gonna use the right-hand rule. So we, are, we know that A cross B produces, um, well, the cross product of A and B produces a third vector. That third vector is perpendicular to A and to B, meaning that it's perpendicular to the plane defined by A and B. Okay. So for example, if A and B are in the plane of the page, that tells me that A cross B has to be perpendicular to the page, but that doesn't tell me if it's into the page or out of the page. So is it into the plane or out of the plane? And how can I find out? So we have two vectors A and B. We apply the right-hand rule, which means start with A. I point my fingers along the A direction. I curl my fingers into B of my right hand, and my thumb points in the direction of the resulting vector which is in this case out of the page. So the A cross B vector in this case would be out of page. Okay. Another way to say it is if in going from A to B, you have to rotate A in the counterclockwise direction, then the result will be out of the page. If you have to rotate A into B in the clockwise direction, then the resulting vector will be into the page. So if that's true, then what of the vector B cross A? Well, to go from B to A, that's a clockwise rotation. So indeed, that would be into the page, which we represent with an X and a circle, kind of like looking at the backside of an arrow. And so what we see then is a cross B is going to have the same magnitude as B cross A, but will have the opposite sign. So if you flip the order of the product, you change the sign of the vector product. Recall, though, that the dot product or scalar product A dot B does not depend on direction.
a.b is equal to a.b.a. So this is how we can talk about the, the vector cross product in terms of its magnitude and the direction. Um, in the one of the very first videos of this class, we looked at how to write out the cross product using the components, and we related the cross product to the determinant of a matrix formed by the unit vectors and the components of the a and b vectors. So I refer you to that video uh, called Vector Arithmetic that talks you through um, computing the vector cross product using components. With all of this, though, magnitude and direction and thinking about the components of the cross product, um, we have everything we need to start talking about angular momentum. So that will be the topic of our next video. So it's back to the physics. Until then, take care and be well.